Well, let's uh, start uh, the day with uh, the presentation uh, by Scallion. Scallion is uh, other of our sponsors and they have been supporting us from the very first year back in 2013. Probably you don't know because then they had a different name. They were Indicen and today they are Scallion. But uh, Alberto and Susana, they have been supporting us every year since we started with this. So thank you very much. And uh, Alejandro and Silvia, they are going to talk to us about machine learning, embedded, and C++ all in a single talk. So, thank you very much. Go ahead. Hello. <clears throat> it's a pleasure for me to be here uh, another year with Scallion. And before starting our presentation, uh, we would like to thank uh, Scallion in public for the opportunity and also to all those who has organized this uh, fantastic C++ event and especially the professor Jose Daniel for this. And our presentation entitled Machine Learning Applications for Embedded Devices Using Tiny Machine Learning and C++. Uh, we are going to show how you can implement and deploy neural network models in uh, tiny and underpowered devices. I don't know what happens, sorry. Well, thanks. Please let me present myself. I'm Alejandro Hidalgo and I'm a software engineer of the Scallion Group, but I'm also a, a professor at the University of Malaga in subjects related with uh, microcontrollers and embedded systems. And my lovely colleague here is Silvia and she will present herself later. Well, Scallion is a multinational company that was uh, founded in France and uh, currently is presented in, in several countries, among which we can highlight Germany, Italy, Spain, UK, among others. Our company is mainly focused on uh, big data and artificial intelligence solutions, but uh, we also have an incredible, uh, an incredible and important team dedicated to the software development for embedded systems. Scallion is specialized in providing solutions in areas such as finance, automotion, industry, aeronautics, and so on. In the next section, we are going to explain a general workflow of a machine learning application, but without entering in low-level details. As you probably already know, machine learning is a field of the artificial intelligence that uses specific algorithms in order to provide computers with the ability to uh, identify patterns in massive uh, data for then make future predictions using or based in unknown data. Well, the first thing we need to do when developing a machine learning application is to completely define the problem we want to solve. The next is to collect the necessary data in order to train the model. This data can be collected from remote databases or they can be self-generated, for example. Before deploying or training the model, it is essential to adapt this data in order to prevent the model for, for le from learning uh, unwanted things. And at this point, we can define the neural network architecture. Once the neural network architecture has been defined, we can train the model for uh, learn uh, patterns from data. Well, before deploying the model into a microcontroller, we must ensure it works properly. And if the model doesn't work properly, we need to improve it. For example, by changing model parameters or by changing the neural network architecture. And when the model is working properly, we can deploy it to a microcontroller. And finally, we can make predictions based on unknown data. 
So, well, the question here is what is needed to implement machine learning models? It's important to note that machine learning requires um, a large number of calculations to adjust internal parameters and to minimize errors. Also, data visualization requires high computing power in order to create interactive graphics from large datasets. So, the latest uh, generation of processors, GPUs, fast unit memories, and uh, a massive storage space is generally used. So, the next question is, does this mean that we cannot run machine learning models on devices with underpowered processors and low memory capacity? And the answer to this question is definitely not. So this problem is what tiny machine learning is here to solve. Tiny machine learning refers to the use of machine learning models in low power consumption devices, as for example, microcontrollers. And the key tools for accomplishing this are TensorFlow Lite and Keras. So, well, it's important to take into account that the most expensive part of the process, that is the model training, was done in a personal computer or in a computer with a third time powerful. And um, which are the main key concepts of tiny machine learning? So, well, the first thing is we need to convert the model to be compatible with TensorFlow Lite. The second is we need to optimize the model from the point of view of the execution time and from the point of view of the memory. So one of the main techniques in order to uh, optim optimize this model is called quantization. When we are training a model, we need so much precision in order to adjust internal parameters and to minimize errors at the output. But when we are making predictions, when we are executing the network, we do not need such precision. And so quantization basically changes internal types in order to improve the memory consumption and to improve the execution speed. But finally, before deploying the model into a microcontroller, we need to convert this model to a suitable language for this type of systems. We convert this model to a C++ representation using the XSV command. Once the model has been converted, we can deploy it to the microcontroller. And in this case, we have used Visual Studio Code Editor and a plugin for software development for embedded devices and microcontrollers that is called Platform IO. And then in the Case of study Sylvia is going to present below. We use an SP32 microcontroller from the specific company. But there is a one more question. Why C++? So, well, the first thing is that C++ is closer to the hardware. And this is so useful in those applications where software is highly coupled with hardware and a, a low level software support is required. Second thing is related with performance. C++ is a programming language that is faster than others, and it also provides excellent concurrency support. And this is very useful in those areas where performance is quite critical and the required latency is very low. And the last one is related with memory. C++ allows you full control over the memory management. So this is very important in those applications where performance is so important. So we have designed a case study and Silvia is going to present it. So Silvia, the floor is yours. Thanks, Alejandro. Hello, my name is Silvia Hernandez. I'm a software engineer and I have been programming professionally in C++ about a year, including two years in embedded hardware. Um, in our case of a study, we conceived in a sign a function. It's simple and has no math sense, but it's very didactic and illustrative to understand the key concept. Um, in, in this section, uh, we are going to explain um, step by step 
how you can use the presenting tools you are trained uh, our young machine learning model. First, let's see how to generate and train the model. Since we already know the sign operation world, we have generated the data ourselves, your train uh, our model. In this case, uh, we have generated um, no, 1,000 random values. Um, in this graph, so the uh, representation training, testing, and validating data to train the model. Once the data has been collected, we can define the, architecture, the model architecture using Keras. Uh, the model architecture basically refers the network phase, the network size, and the network configuration. For example, a optimization algorithm and <laughs> the last function uh, for training the model. Once the model is defined, uh, we can train the model using Keras. To do so, we specify the training data set, the epoch that specifies how many uh, RAM um, to train the set, and the bus size, um, how many um, data set uh, to put in the network. And finally, the, validation, uh, the data validate for the model. Um, in this graph, uh, we can see the resulting to the process, uh, the train process. We see the losses and the absolute error. If by analyze, uh, analyzing this graph, it's possible or uh, we can discover uh, what's, wrong, um, what's wrong during the training process. Um, now, what the model is training, we can use a um, TensorFlow Light Converter Python API to convert the model with TensorFlow and TensorFlow Light model. Uh, this code snippet does the optimization, um, the model optimization by applying quantization. In our case, uh, the data reduced from 32 bits flight and point number to a uh, two bit integer number. Uh, if we compare the basic model and the quantized model uh, size, we have a size reduction for uh, 140 bytes. Note that the quantized model is just 140 bytes smaller than the original TensorFlow light or model. Uh, this is because our model is more uh, is um, so sample that the neural network uh, architecture is larger in size than the connection ways. Um, as we explained um, before, we use XXD command to convert uh, the model into a C++ uh, source file. The resulting file is an array of hexadecimal blocks that represent the train model. Um, in the following section, we are going to explain the C++ code uh, for running inside a micro device, uh, a microcontroller device. The microcontroller we use as a part of case study was the ESP32 for a specific company. We also decide to use Arduino framework because uh, it is easy to use and it is widely uh, known. It is widely known. The application code, uh, code is writing in a simple file. This file is main CPP. In this file, we can identify three sections. The first section is uh, included section. The second section is the setup function. This function executes only once, and it is designed to configure the software and the microcontroller. The third section is the loop function. 
uh, this function, uh, this loop function, execute uh, after a set of action. It is important to note um, that we can use platform IO uh, for developing software. This tool specify uh, the code generation process in um, a file called platform IO ini. This file is very similar uh, to a CMake. Uh, in this file, uh, um, we can see or we can of um, Yes, it's open this file with an editor. We can see the compilation flag, the dependencies, uh, among others. Among these included, uh, we can highlight the following ones. The dependencies for TensorFlow Lite, the dependencies uh, definition of the mathematical operation required using the model execution, the dependencies for the login system, the dependencies for the tensor flow light interpreter for executing the train model and make prediction, and finally, the dependencies for pre-train and hexadecimal dump model. Once the dependencies are included, we have defined a private namespace with the following global variables. Pointer of the, inst of the instance of the login system, the pre-train model, the mathematical operation set, and the tensor light, uh, the tensor flow light interpreter. Then the memory area for the interpreter to store the tensor. And finally, the size of the reserve memory is calculated by the trial and an error procedure. Once the global, uh, the global variables has been declared, we are going to see the application setup prodigia. This is the code containing the setup function. In this code, first, we create the specified type of error reporter. In this case, macro error reporter is a specialization for error reporter, implementing through inherence and polymorphism. Next, we compose the model using the size array generated from the optimized TensorFlow Lite model. And compare the model version versus the schema version that, um, that the installed library uses. All three versions are different. They should work just as well. Later, we we'll create the interpreter. The interpreter, the interpreter receives um, the pre-trained model, the mathematical operation set, the memory area for storing tensors, and finally, the login system. And uh, after check, it has been created correctly. Um, the remaining instruction in the setup function check if the model is expected. For example, a size, or a size of input and output data. Regarding the next state, once the application and the device are configured, uh, we can start make prediction. The prediction are made at four second interval in our case. In this part of the code, first, we get the input tensor and fill it with the input data. Then uh, we generate a random input, generally uh, gen normalizes it and uses it uh, to make prediction. Later, we invoke the interpreter to make prediction. And finally, with, the code, uh, with this code through the output tensor, uh, we can obtain the make prediction. Now, Alejandro will share the result. Thanks, Silvia. Well, let's see something about memory consumption and execution time of the application. Well, for this, we have collected some data in order to evaluate the whole process we have described along all these slides. And we have collected data in compilation time, but also in execution time. And regarding results in compilation time, we can highlight the following. Quantized model is uh, about 33 kilobytes of memory size. 
and compiler said that the application generated um, will consume about 33 kilobytes of RAM memory and about 63 kilobytes of flash memory. And from the point of view of the execution time, we can highlight that the heap memory consumption is about 24 kilobytes. And the execution time in average, only for the model execution, is about 349 microseconds. So it seems that conclusions can be obvious. And for finally, we some applications of uh, these tools of techniques, and one of them can be agriculture to improve smart farming techniques. For example, smart cities where um, tiny devices and low power consumption devices are used almost anywhere. Healthcare to improve uh, persistent and on demand healthcare with. Uh, tiny devices that are continuously monitoring our health status and insecurity, for example, in order to improve threats detection. And we have come to the end of our presentation and we hope you have found all these tools and processes useful for your work or for your hobby project. And thanks for your attention and we hope we can find soon in future opportunities and if you have any question i think this is a moment so thank you very much thank you so questions uh, first of all, of all uh, thank you for the talk i have uh, one doubt when you do the process of quantification, have you checked the difference of the average error before and after? And if you do, how much you lost in the precision? We have not checked that because uh, our example is focused on give a step-by-step -step, uh, tutorial on how you can use uh, the tools and we have not made a deep analysis on how the loss error body between the basic model and the quantized model. So I can answer your question. It was as cu curious. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Any other question? Okay. Thank you very much.